Hello there, my name is Logan, and welcome to a tutorial on programming your Altera Max 2 EPM 240T100C. There are four important pieces to programming your PLD. Your PLD itself, the power cable for it, the programming cable, and a computer with Cordis. Let's start with setting up. Plug both cables into your computer. Then plug the other end of those cables into the PLD. The programming cable has a guide to make sure it can only be plugged in one way. The PLD should now have a red light that can be turned off and on with the switch. This indicates whether it's on or off. Now, let's create a file that's actually worth downloading to your PLD. The first thing you should do is open up Cordis on your computer. I'm accessing Cordis through Cloud Paging Player. Once you are greeted by the home screen, click on Create New Project Wizard. You will be shown the introduction screen. You can click Next. You will now see the directory name and top level entity. Choose the name of your file and where you want it to be saved to. Then you can click Next. If you make multiple projects that all lead to the same location, you will get a warning from Cordis that files with the same name could accidentally affect the wrong project. So try to keep files separately and properly organized. Project type. We will be wanting an empty project for this. Click Next. You can now add other files into your project. We'll be skipping this function. Click Next. Selecting your PLD is one of the most important steps. We want an Altera Max 2 EPM 240T100C. Change the family to Max 2. Then scroll through the available devices until you find EPM 240T100C. I find widening the window to help navigate the small scrolling area. Once you've clicked on your PLD, it's highlighted. Click Next. We do not need to go over EDA tool settings. Click Next again. And finally, we're at the summary, showing we are done. Hit Finish. So now, we want to create some kind of circuit to be put into the PLD. To make a circuit, hit File, then New. Or, you can just use the shortcut. You will now see the New pop-up menu. For this class, we'll only be using two of these options. The Block Diagram slash Schematic File, and VHDL. For now, let's select the diagram slash schematic because, in my opinion, it is the easier of the two. There's three important tools here to note. Symbol tool, pin tool, and orthogonal node tool. When you click the arrow next to the pin tool, you're given the option to pick inputs, outputs, and bidar. Bidir? All we know now are currently inputs and outputs. Once an input or output is placed, you can change the name to whatever you like. Clicking Symbol Tool opens up an entire menu. Within this folder is any gate you can think of. In order to find what we will be using in this class, click the arrow next to Folder, then click the arrow next to the Primitives. The Buffer folder contains a whole multitude of buffer gates. The most common thing we'll be using is NOT gates from here. The Logic folder contains all of the basic gates that we know, AND, OR, NOR, etc. It will state the type of gate and its name and the amount of inputs next to it. The other folder contains oddball gates. We'll mostly be using this one for our VCCs and grounds. The pin folder contains the exact same items as the pin tool from earlier. So if you feel like taking longer to get to your inputs and outputs, use this. And finally, the storage folder contains any kind of gate that involves memory or being clocked, such as flip-flops. Once you've clicked a symbol, hit OK. You can now place that symbol anywhere multiple times until you hit escape. And finally, the orthogonal node tool is the wire. Much simpler than it sounds. Click a point and hold down as you move the mouse. Let go at the point you want it to connect to. If you see an X, that means that it isn't connected to anything at that point. To help navigate around here, you can use the bars to move left and right, as well as up and down. Scrolling on the mouse also moves you up and down, and if you use control while scrolling the mouse, it allows you to zoom in and out. As you can see here, I've just made an AND gate. Let's compile it to see if it's okay. Go to the blue arrow on your hotbar, or you can hit control L in order to compile it. You'll get a new screen telling you the summary. Wait for it to be done and see if there's any errors. Using our AND gate example, we've now finished. Here at the bottom, all errors and warnings are listed. We have no errors, which means we can continue on, and although we have warnings, we can ignore those, because uh, who cares? Let's assign the pins. 
go to the assignment at the top and choose Pin Planner. You'll get a new window, and there's lots of information on the screen, so let's just focus on three parts. Node name, direction, and location. The node name is the name of your inputs. The direction is whether they are inputs or outputs. And location is what pin they are attached to. When you're here, the node name and direction should already be correct, so we just need to make sure that the pins and locations are correct. There are two ways of attaching a location to a pin. You can double click on one of the circles on the large diagram in the center. Go over to its pin properties and set its node name to be one of your nodes. It will then be set to the correct location with the pin number next to the circle. Or you can double click on the empty location box and get a pull down window, then select the numbered pin you want. There's no need to save or hit any kind of next button. You can simply X out of the window when you're done. Now you can download the file to your PLD. Click on the programmer. As soon as you do, there'll be a new window in front of you. The first thing you want to do is check right here for your hardware setup. It should say USB blaster. If it does not, click on the hardware setup. Once there, you should see a USB blaster under the hardware items. Double click it, then hit close. You'll want to click on the diagram of the PLD to make sure it's properly selected. Then check the box labeled program slash configure. All boxes below it will be automatically checked. Then hit start. You'll be able to see the green bar increase to 100%. Once it says 100% successful, you're done. Now, here's three common errors and how to avoid them. If the progress bar keeps saying 0% fail, as soon as you hit start, your PLD's not on. Make sure the red light's on and then start downloading. If you change the name of your inputs, compile and then reassign pins, otherwise it will not know where to put your inputs and outputs. If your pin layout is completely different than the diagram I showed in this video, you've selected the wrong PLD. Go back and make sure it's the correct Altera Max 2 model. Now that you're done, you can remove the programming cable and hook up your PLD to a board. You need to leave the PLD plugged into its original power source. The PLD shows numbers above the pins that will correlate with numbers you assigned on the diagram during the pin planning phase. Then, simply use these pins to plug it into your board with the inputs and outputs. Here we can see the final result of my AND gate. I hope that this video was educational and a decent enough tutorial to be able to get you started on using Cordis and downloading to PLDs. I know it's already helped me. Uh, my name is Logan, and thank you so much for watching. Doodles.